Hi guys and gals, Froggy here. What I've got for you today is a battery replacement on a 2004 Lexus IS300. Uh, and I want to explain to you why I'm replacing the battery on this. The car still starts actually, but uh, what I noticed what I noticed, uh, first thing, this is this is a new car to the, the family of cars of Froggy. Um, I did a battery service the other day where I topped up the distilled water in it, and I noticed there was some a uh, little dribbling, little sweating, little little leakage of battery acid around the edges, and but I didn't think too much about it at the time. I filled it up, ran the car a few days, and then I noticed there was some drippage underneath the car and it was battery acid. Uh, so I went and looked a little further and I looked down, I'm going to try and show this to you, I'll show it better to you before. I looked down around where the battery sits, the tray, and the tray was wet with battery acid. You can see it right there, I think. You can see where it leaked down the edge of the battery. And also there was a slight bulging to the battery case itself. So what, and I, and I already knew there was a, a 2008 battery. So what this tells me is the battery's on its last legs. The alternator is trying like heck to keep the battery charged to where it's supposed to be charged and that constant charging is making it boil over. It's not really boiling, all right, but they call it uh, they call it that. It's making some battery acid come out the top vents a little bit. And when I saw it on the ground and I knew uh, I need to get a new battery even though it was still starting. What can happen is depending on how the car is made, that battery acid can drip down onto some other components. For example, in the C5 Corvettes, the battery is prone to leaking. It has this, it is what's called a side terminal battery. This is not a side terminal. This is a top terminal battery. But in the C5, early C5 Corvettes, it was a side terminal battery and it would leak. And the side terminals were below the level of the battery acid. Battery acid goes down and what's right underneath is the engine control module and it would damage the engine control module so instead of just replacing a battery you'd be placing another very expensive component. So when you see a battery that's real wet, you want to just call it wet around the top or leaking down the sides or you see it in the bottom, you need to replace it. Uh, this one, we're going to take it out right now. I'm not going to spend too much time on this, I'm just going to show you there's a hold down clamp here with two 10 millimeter nuts I'm going to take those out and then I'm going to disconnect positive first. I'm going to hold it out of the way with a strap. Then I'm going to disconnect the negative. Um, the reason I do that is if I take the positive off first, nothing can happen uh, unless something touches this positive terminal. If I take the negative off first and I touch the negative to the chassis or to a ground, I can get a spark. Spark can cause an explosion of the fumes that come out of a battery. So, you've been advised. Uh, this is uh, this is how you want to take it out. I want to show you a nice little tool that I have. Uh, I got this from my grandfather like uh, 50 years ago. Anyway, this it, it just fits over the two terminals. Obviously, it's it's not a conductive material, so you're not doing a dead short across the terminals. It just slides on and then gets an angle and it gets tight and this battery weighs about 35 pounds or so so it's kind of hard to lift out just using your fingers over the edge but if you have a tool like this you can lift it out pretty easy so here we go alright battery's out and here's what I suspected to find is what I found you see all the wetness you see the corrosion around that hold down nut and that other hold down nut so all this battery acid was going down underneath into the tray. This is called the tray that holds the battery. And I'm going to see if I can get the tray out and then uh, 
what I'm going to do is neutralize it with baking soda and water. I'm just going to mix up some baking soda and water and I'm going to splash it everywhere I can. That will neutralize the acid, otherwise that acid will sit there for a while and keep eating into uh, whatever it touches. You know, if it touches uh, rubber or plastic, that's not too bad, but if it touches metal or wiring, that's bad. Okay, I, uh, I got lucky and I loosened up those three uh, hold-down uh, bolts. Uh, they're 10 millimeter, and I'm going to be able to get this out, and we'll see what's underneath it. Well, I think Froggy's pretty lucky. I don't see any damage underneath here. There's, you know, a little bit of traces of where the acid dripped, and I'm going to neutralize that, as I told you, with baking soda and water. This looks like the drain hole, the drain uh, from the bottom of the tray went down here, and I'm not going to try and get to it right now but next time I'm under the car I'll take a look there and I think that Lexus was smart enough to make this drain just go straight down to the ground um, so uh, we're looking good here I'm gonna uh, spray this up and clean it up and then put this clean the tray and then I'm going to uh, put my new battery in okay uh, this is a mixture of uh, water and purple power it's just a general degreaser. I know I told you I was going to use some baking soda, which is the best neutralizer, but um, there's not that much here. And I'm just shooting it up real good. It's all going to drain down to the garage floor. And then I'll have, a, I'll have a big mess on the garage floor, but at least this will be clean. And no further damage will happen from the battery acid. There we go. I'm spraying some more of that decreaser on this tray, cleaning it up. I got a little, got a little brush here, and then I've got some uh, clean, clean old water out of the garden hose. Okay, I got my tray back in. I'm, I'm tightening up these uh, hold downs, hold down bolts for the tray. Um, you don't have to put them too tight. They're not going to go anywhere. And then I'm ready to drop the new battery in. Uh, and here's the new battery. It's got a, it's a Bosch. It's a Group 24. The Group tells you the dimensions of the battery, whether it will fit in the battery hold on, holding box. Um, and then there are other ratings. Cold cranking amps. This one is 700 at zero F. Cranking amps, 850 at 32F, that's Fahrenheit. Reserve capacity, 25 at 25 amps, 120. That's a lot of reserve capacity. That's a pretty good battery. Three-year warranty, 100% refund, and then it's prorated up to, I think, uh, 96 months. Uh, divide that by 12, and that'll give you the years. Uh, this is the old battery. Uh, I'm going to return that and get 12 bucks back. That's the core charge because there's a value in this, especially the lead. They recycle these. Um, so there's a little, uh, little bit of info on uh, batteries. I'm spreading that grease around to get a nice thick coating on there. Um, so they also have a uh, a can of spray grease that you can use, uh, but I don't happen to have one in the shop, so I'm just using my finger and some bearing grease. Well, I'm going to take a quick look to make sure that the wa the battery acid level is correct, which it should be because it's brand new, but it never hurts to double check. Looks good. Okay, I'm putting that grease on the terminals. This will not interfere with any conductivity but it will help from uh, it'll help from corrosion and also I'll show you a little thing these were already on there and I'm going to put them back on there they're in pretty good shape this is a just piece of felt that has an anti-corrosive uh, chemical that's impregnated into the felt so that'll help too uh, this little tool is a round wire brush. 
and I'm going to use that to clean the cable pins just like that. I'm going to do it better but I've only got two hands here. Uh, I don't have to, it's also got an end to clean those terminals but they're brand new so I'm not going to put it on there. Okay there you go I think Froggy's done. Whoops. What's that? What? I think I melted the top of the relay and fuse box with my light. I got a really, really hot halogen light there and I think it might have bumped up against there. Somebody's going to wonder what the heck happened there, but I know what it was. It didn't go through, so no harm. Uh, so what else can I tell you about battery? It's in there. Uh, oh, I know. Some batteries for some car manufacturers, or I should say not the batteries, but the cars, like BMW specifically, you have to go in and register the battery to the car. Now what the heck does register the battery to the car mean? Well, basically it means that you're telling the electronics that control the alternator that charges the battery on a BMW, you're telling those electronics what kind of battery the car has been what what kind of battery you replaced and put in the car when you changed it out from the original equipment. Um, some batteries take a little more amperage to charge, some take a little less and supposedly I am told if you don't register the type of battery to a BMW um, electronics that control the alternator you could damage the battery. Now is that true? Yeah, I guess probably BMWs are that way. With this Lexus, I don't think so. I'm going to check and find out. And if I find out that this battery has to be registered to the Lexus, I'm going to put a note on the end of the video. Okay? But other than that, it's done. We got a new battery. Um, assume that it starts up. I'm not going to crawl in there and start it up for you. Um, I'm sure it's fine. Uh, so if this helps you out, Give me a thumbs up. If you want to see more from Old Froggy, then uh, subscribe to my channel and you'll get more. Okay, have a nice weekend. It's Friday where I am and I'm done. Uh, I'm going to the gym. So, Froggy out. See you later. Okay, okay. I know you guys want to see it start up, so <clears throat> we'll start it up. Remember, I wasn't having a starting problem with this anyway. It was just a leaking battery problem. So, that sounds good. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah, baby. You kidding? She's good. And let's just look at... Let's see. Okay. Um, this is your uh, voltage. And it should read right where it is. If it's pegged way up there where it says 18... That's too much. It's down like nine, that's too much. It's right in between those two, so nine plus four and a half is about thirteen and a half, so it's reading right where it should. Okay? Okay guys, see you later. Be safe, have a good weekend.